Guys, what is going on? Joe with Odyssey Off-Road here at you in the garage with yet another ATV walk around and review. So, probably saying to yourself, Joe, didn't you just do a video, more than one actually, on a couple of Renegade 1000s you bought? And yes, if you're thinking that, you're correct, I did. I made a mistake. Uh, I got rid of one of the Renegades and I won't get into too much detail here because I want to make this mostly about the walk around and review of this machine. Basically, the gist of it was I'm gonna make I plan on making a full video and explaining why and comparing the Grizzly to Renegade and positives and negatives of both and why I got rid of mine. Bottom line is I have a Raptor 700. The Renegade is an absolute beast. It's an animal. Fastest ATV bar none out of the box in a straight line. And it's built for that purpose. I don't need that. And I got sucked into that, wanting the biggest and the baddest. Um, and I really don't need it. My wife needs it. And I'll tell you, she needs it because she has one machine. She needs one machine to do everything. She wants to go to the dunes with me. She needs the power of the dune, a big, heavy machine. Uh, she wants to trail ride. She wants to do anything I do. She's going to use one machine, and it's going to do everything for her. I have two. I, if I want to go fast and rip and go to the dunes, that's that's my machine right there, the Rap 700. If I want to go and be comfortable and do some four-wheeling, I got this machine right here. And it's, to me, best of both worlds. We'll do a whole other video and we'll talk about that. If you guys have any more questions or more information you want as to the reasoning and why, pluses and minuses of which machine to get, which is best for you. I'll do a whole video on that. We'll talk about it. Um, you guys can criticize me or whatever you want in that one. But right now we're going to talk about the Grizzly. This is about the Yamaha Grizzly Special Edition 2023 model. Now, full disclosure, I was going to get the Yamaha Grizzly 700 base model. And if it was a, the same colors as the 2022s, which is like that high-vis yellow similar to the graphics here, and the gray... That was a good-looking machine. Um, there's a guy on YouTube, Thomper B. Thompson. He has one. And, and what, seeing his videos and him rip around, him talk about his Grizzly, along with uh, Dirt Obsession. Those guys love the Grizzlies. Um, Flying Brian on Dirt Obsession has one. There's a guy on uh, guy KC ATV, I believe his name is. The YouTube channel's name is. Um, he does a lot of trail riding videos for Grizzlies. And they're just watching all those guys and talking and, you know, hearing them talk about their Grizzlies and their opinions on them after riding them and putting them through the paces and having them for a long time. It's just nothing but a quality built machine. It's going to last forever. Now, everything, every machine you're going to get, you know, could potentially have issues. But for the most part, Yamaha is kind of like the same reputation as Honda. Bulletproof. Take care of it. Do the basic maintenance. It's going to last you forever. So I also love the way it looks. It's super aggressive. Um, if you want it even look more aggressive, you can take this front rack off. It's fully removable. Um, just the brackets go through through the plastics down to the frame. You can take it off if you're not going to use your front rack and just you're going to use your rear one. And you can really get that those aggressive lines there in the front. I may do that, but we're going to keep it on right now. just want to feel it out, use it a few times, see if I'm really going to need the front rack or not. I may be fine with just putting a small box on the back for long rides and never use the front one. And if that's the case and I find I'm not using it, I'll take it off and give it that real aggressive front sporty look. Um, and you kind of get the best of both worlds, but suspension, there's no Fox suspension. There's nothing fancy on it. It's just basic shocks with, uh, five preload settings. They're set from the factory at second to the softest and it's pretty soft, but not as soft and as flimsy as say the shocks on a, um, Outlander 570. My sister-in-law's Outlander 570. Those shocks are absolute junk unless you're, and I've done a video about that already. Uh, unless you're, you know, just using it for farm work. But even then, I can't even imagine uh, hooking a small trailer or something up to it without the bottom, the suspension bottoming out in the back because it's so soft. You put, you can almost bottom it out with your hands, pushing out on it. These have a nice bit of resistance to them. I've uh, not taken it in dirt yet. I haven't driven it aggressively. I took it around the block, put four or five miles on it just to get the, some heat cycles in the motor and break it in. And they, it, it rides really nice. Um, it's not too soft. You get on it. The, the suspension is not sagging right away. It's got you got about 12 inches of ground clearance on this machine. Full skid plates. 
although they, albeit they are plastic, but they're full skid plates and you have access to drain all the fluids without making a gigantic mess, unlike some other manufacturers out there, <clears throat> can am um, And so, easy maintenance. Oil filter, easy access, it's right here. Just grab it, unscrew it, take it out. You can take, if you want even easier access, you can, you know, three 10 millimeter screws. You just take this shield off right here and you can get to it even easier, but I, you really can just reach right around and grab it and you're good. Check in your oil right here. Easy again access is your dipstick. I will tell you um, that, now you see how that locks in nice? It's not coming off, it's not gonna fall off on a trail. Quality, Yamaha quality, all over this machine, it's quality. Um, the oil was a little bit low from the factory. Not dangerous low, it wasn't below the hash marks, but it was right at the bottom. So at the lowest point you would want to be safe. It took about a quarter of a quart. I did it yesterday when I brought it home the machine and checked it again this morning. Now you wanna check the oil in this machine cold. This does not have a dry sump, it's a wet sump um, engine. So there's no external oil tank. So you're gonna check it cold. So first thing before you ride, I would say, you know, the engine hasn't been running, um, check your oil, go from there. So I added a quarter of a quart about, and it takes about 2.2 .2 quarts total. So that, two, it probably had about two quarts in it, I would say. So it was a little bit low. Um, I checked the front and rear diff. They were full, they were good. You, those are the only three fluids you have on here. The engine oil works with for the transmission. It's kind of like with the Yamaha Raptor, it's the same engine. So. Um, you just change your oil, your front diff, your rear diff. The front and rear diff take a little bit less than a quarter of a quart of the same type of fluid, 80, 90. So you can use 75, 90 if, if you're going synthetic. Most of the synthetics are 75, 90, and you'll be good. But you buy one quart, if you change your differential fluid, let's say once a year and you do your engine oil twice a year or however often, you one quart's gonna last you two years. Even if you change them every six, change the fluids every six months, one quart's gonna last you a year. I mean, you can use top of the line. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about, you, a lot of people cheap out on their fluids. There's no reason to cheap out on differential fluid in this machine. Get the best differential fluid you can get, money can buy. Because for the amount you're gonna, it uses, and the amount you're gonna, often you're gonna change it, it's cheap. One $20 bottle of uh, top of the line differential fluid is gonna last you a year. So if you can't afford $20 high-end differential fluid for the year, then maybe you shouldn't be on an ATV even. But that's a whole nother topic, right? So we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Yamaha Grizzly and why it's a nice machine. Um, why I chose it, I had never really thought about getting it when I bought, look, looking at the Can-Am. Um, and then yeah, those, those guys that I mentioned already, Dirt Obsession, KC ATV, Thomper Be Thomping, um, I'll leave a link to those guys' channels here in the description of this video too. Big shout out to them. I've watched, I watched their videos a ton before buying this machine um, and some other random videos as well that I found helpful. So this special edition um, I got because I didn't like the colors of the base model on the 2023 model year. It's like a baby blue. I'll put, I'll insert some photos right here. You'll see it's a baby blue. And I don't know, I couldn't drive around that, that, that color all day. The XTR, which is the one above this, uh, but you just get a winch. It's basically same as this, but you get a winch and they just black out the wheels. Same wheels, but they're black. I didn't like that color either. It's like a desert tan. And it almost looks like a mustardy. It's just not attractive looking, in my opinion. Not, wasn't for me. Some people like it, not a knock. Everybody's got their own tastes, right? I couldn't, I, I wasn't a fan. So this color scheme to me is absolutely gorgeous. You got your metallic blue, got your high-vis yellow accents, just enough to be nice and noticeable. The high-vis yellow Grizzly Special Edition here. And then you got a little chrome just to class it up for the Yamaha. And you got a little bit of chrome on the wheels for the hubcaps, center caps, I should say. Um, these wheels, what can I say about them? Look at them. They're like automotive quality, 14 inch rims, square tire setup. So when you go from the base model to the special edition and the XTR, they come with the same wheel tire package. 
Yamaha's listening to people. A lot of people on the aftermarket go to a square tire setup, after fact. You know, traditional ATV, like that Renegade stay right there, and your sport quads. Now, sport quads are a different animal. You need skinny front tires, wide rear tires. That's where you got to run them. But like that Renegade, a lot of people that run on GNCC, they switch to four sim same size tires front and rear for cornering and purposes and stuff like that. So whereas you have 10 inch wide and eight inch wide rear to front on that. On here, what a lot of people do is they'll go run a nine rear, nine front. What Yamaha did was they give you 27 inch Maxxis Zillas. Now you can argue the tire choice maybe maybe not perfect for everybody, but they give you 27 inch tires by 10 wide front and rear. Now you could rotate these, get more life out of them front to back, um, my opinion, I mean, that's, that's Yamaha listening to what people are doing and what people want and giving it to you. They said, okay, you want a higher end wheel tire? Um, you, want, you want to run the same tire front and rear on the higher models? We're going to give that to you right from the factory. 27-inch tires. Now, 27-inch tires may take a little bit of power away, but these Maxxis Zillas are actually a fairly light, mud-aggressive tire. Um, and you've got 12 inches of ground clearance. I mean, look at that thing. It's, 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 the ground clearance is crazy um, from the factory on this thing. It's just really good looking machine. The profile, the ground clearance, uh, the build quality, the coloring. I, I just fell in love with the colors. Um, so that's why I went with the special edition. Um, the 2022 had better color options. The XTR was like a dark charcoal gray and black with the orange writing. That was, that's an absolute beautiful machine. Flying Brian has one of those on Dirt Obsession. Gorgeous. If that was this year, it's colors. I might have chosen that one. Um, these are all painted. And again, the, the base model too for 2022 is really nice. It was all this high vis yellow and a gray. And I think it's really nice. It's too much for some people. I get that. I like it. I like it's, the colors to pop like that. And uh, Thomper be thumping that YouTube channel. He he's got that color scheme, 2022 base model, and it's beautiful. I I think it's gorgeous. Um, but this year for the 23s, my opinion, best color combination, best coloring. Now let's get into some other things about it. It's got some storage from the factory. It's got some nice storage. Um, if you just carry around a few things, a tow rope, some small hand tools a rag, a bottle of water, and your, your phone and your keys. You don't really even need to add a box because you got a nice storage compartment back here. You can put your tow ropes, tow straps, some tie downs. Uh, this box back here is where I would suggest put those type of things because it's not watertight. Um, it's got a drain in it. You can pop out that when you're cleaning it and it fills up with water and you want to pull it out and drink, let the water drain if you want to rinse it out, you can. But it's not meant to be watertight. It's got a little bit of a foam here which is actually not even on all the way um but this foam is not sealing out anything <laughs> let's be honest maybe a little bit of dirt coming up popping up from the bottom but you, there's a big gap right there you know that everything can get kind of right in it's not meant to be watertight now in the front different story you got two more storage compartments you got one here this has got a seal on the cover so this is watertight dust tight and even got a little string on it, so you can't lose it. How smart is that? So you got a little rubber seal in there. It's not very big, but if you put like a rag, I would say in here, like something to, uh, cause it's hard, it's just plastic, right? It's just, it's basically that size. That's what you're looking at. So you can put uh, like a rag in there or wrap your phone in a rag and you stick your phone in here um, or your wallet, registration, um, papers, you know, that you got to carry permits or maybe wherever you're riding. You don't want it to get wet. Worry about them. Maybe stick them in here. And then that just screws on snug. Then you got another storage here. This is a fairly big one. Let me hop on the bike. So, this is a fairly big storage compartment now. I mean, it's, if I put my arm in there, I'm out to the, from the front, I'm at my elbow. Here. So, you know, it's a fa it's fairly big. It's, it's uh, you can fit a lot of stuff in there. So I mean, you can put whatever you want in here. In here, we'll get warm because obviously the heat from the engine is going to rise, right? 
and this thing closed, you know, it's going to get warm here. So if you want to put like a water bottle or something there, if you're all right with drinking piss warm water, uh, by all, all means, <laughs> stick your water bottle in here. Probably not the best place to keep a cold drink. So, um, because it's going to get a little warm. But again, you can keep a rag. I carry like, I like to carry a rag to wipe my goggles off. Um, you can keep that right here. It's nice and accessible. You can pop it open when you take a break, wipe your, wipe your face, wipe your goggles off. Uh, wipes even like, uh, um, you know, baby wipes or like hand sanitized wipes. People like to carry stuff like that and keep a pack of those in there. Whatever you carry with you is what I'm trying to say. Say we're in a backpack, which is what I was still doing on the Renegade because there's zero storage. I can just throw all that stuff in here and I don't have to carry anything on my back. Um, we could strap a cooler to the back, have our drinks and lunch. My wife's got the small rack on hers. We're going to do a whole video on that one, but what we did, what we like about it. There's plenty of more Renegade content coming, so don't worry because I got rid of mine. We got that one still and I got a lot of stuff we're going to plan and stuff we've done already to it and we're going to have a little bit of discussion on the Renegades. So she's already got a little rack on there we, when we went on trail ride with it when I had the, the other, my Renegade. She had a cooler strap to the back of that, and it worked out well. But again, there was nowhere to store anything else. You know, you put stuff in your pockets, you have pants with pockets. And, you know, or I had, I had my backpack, which I use for when I'm riding my Raptor, which is understandable, it's a sport quad. But, you know, I don't want to have to do that. I just want to hop on it, throw my stuff in the little cubbies, and I'm good. Um, I can get the Yamaha box for the back and have endless storage if I need to. If I'm going on a really long, adventurous trip or... Um, couple day venture you can put that box back there or load it with all your supplies anything you're gonna need full set of tools whatever and you and and you're good you got well, everything you need to carry it with you uh four wheel drive system on these things are awesome it's got a true locker so unlike a limited slip you got a true locker put it in four by four and then you can lock the front up so you have a true front diff lock instead of a limited slip front diff lock so you just run it on regular four-wheel drive, and if, you, if you're really getting a pinch, you can lock it up. Uh, your gauges, sorry about the noise. You can probably hear the neighbor's dogs barking. We're actually doing this in the garage here today. I want to do it outside so you can really get a good depiction of the, uh, the metallic and the paint, but it's so windy. It's like a hurricane outside today for some reason. Um, so the gauges are nice. You have your gear shift select indicators here. Um, you got your speedometer, obviously, your fuel. And then you got your radiant lights here. So that's your electronic power steering. You have a check engine light. Um, uh, um, check engine light would be down here. And then you have like, if, if it overheats or it's running hot, you get your coolant temp indicator right here. Um, so you can show your coolant temperature, clock, hour meter, volts. And then you can change that one to your two trips. Uh, time to your net, to your first service, and your odometer. So these are all basic functions. On any ATV, you have an override for the reverse, so you can get full power in reverse if you need it. And um, you have your three headlights. Let me show you those actually. So one of my, there's two complaints about the machines I have um, as far as quality goes. Everything else is top notch, but there's two things I think they skimped on a little bit or maybe missed the boat. This is a little bit. The cover for the third headlight here, it's kind of like a gap. You can kind of see through it. So it's, this doesn't, to me, it should be like this. It should be like perfectly sealed. It should be like an extra clip here or something that holds this nice and tight. I may fabricate up something, and, and if I can come up with something that'll work, I'll show you guys. We'll make a video on it. But I, I'm, probably some, something you could do. I'm going to take it apart anyway, so I'll, I'll see if I can do something with it because I got a new light coming for that. I'll show you why. So... If you just put your regular headlights on, you have your two headlights in the front on, right and left. And then if you go to high beams, you're going to get that third light. It'll come on, right? So let me show you from the front why we're taking that off. Um, you see the lights. Now you can see right away. You got beautiful LED headlights on the bottom. And then you got this ugly yellow halogen bulb, which does this job. But I don't know why you could, they couldn't stick an LED bulb in there to match the headlights, you know. I ordered one. I'll put a link in the description for the bulb I used. Uh, I, there was another guy on um, YouTube that did the bulb, and he recommended it. Yeah, so we're going to change that so they match. Just more aesthetically pleasing. Not for more light, but just for aesthetics. All right, guys, pause in the regular video. After I finished recording it, the light bulb showed up that I ordered for the third headlight. So I already installed it. It literally took five minutes. Um, I'll show you how to do it quick. And... 
this is what it looks like. So you get two in a pack. It's those right there, obviously. That's the OEM bulb that I took out, a little halogen. And this is what the box looks like. There's the part numbers. It's white, 6500K. And let me take you to the machine. We'll put the lights on and show you. Now, as you can see, the lights all match now. Looks terrific. Shines a great deal of light. It just looks so much better. They all match. The light bulb is a perfect match. I couldn't be happier with that. So I'll show you real quick how you do it. Super simple. There's two little clips there. You pop them out. These guys here. There's one on each side. Pop them out. And then this whole blue cover will just swing up. There's two clips on top. Comes off. In the side of the headlight housing, there's two Phillips screws. Just take those off. The bottom, there's a spring-loaded screw on the bottom. That's just for adjusting and aiming the beam. But you don't need to take that off. It'll let you take the headlight and tilt it forward enough to get the bulb out of the back. Put the new one in and uh, put it back together. It took, takes five minutes. So, as you can see, way better. So, back to the regular video. All right. So... What can I say? I mean, it's a beautiful machine. You can't argue that. If you're in the market for this type of a machine, uh, for a utility that you can trail ride with, that, look at the Grizzlies. Uh, you can get a Kodiak. It's a little bit smaller than this. The Kodiaks are a little bit smaller. Even the Kodiak 700, you're not getting the same power as you are with the Grizzly 700. Although the motor's the same, it's a little bit detuned, and the clutching, it's got heavier weights in it. So it's not going to spin out as fast. So you're going to be down on power. Um, on the, the Kodiak versus the Grizzly. So this is a fairly big machine. It's 49 wide. It's about six inches shorter overall than the Renegade is. So that is something that may work out nice when I load them up all up on the trailer as far as fitting them all a little bit better. Um, but Great machine. I took it down the road the other day, yesterday when I got it. I was thinking these tires, man, they're going to be not good on hard, you know, on, I do some pavement sometimes to get to the trails. And I was just thinking these tires are not going to work out on the pavement. And that was one of the reasons why I was going to maybe get the base model and then just upgrade the tires to something a little more durable anyway and save the $600 in the price difference. But I'm actually rather surprised i mean i i haven't taken it in the dirt yet so i don't know how they're going to handle that but driving down the blacktop roads in my neighborhood i put about four or five miles on them just driving around the roads doing some laps getting some heat cycles in the engine and on the belt break the belt in and it these tires ride dead straight and super soft and smooth on the on the pavement I'm, i was blown away actually i was not expecting that at all i was expecting if there was one area where it was going to be horrible it would be on the pavement but to the contrary, I mean, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. So we'll see how it does on the dirt. I'll report back. Worst case scenario, if I don't really hate them and I don't like, they don't work out for me in my type of terrain, we'll pop them off. We'll get a set of like big horn type tires or something, a good all terrain, multi-purpose tire. Um, and we'll sell these. People love these Max Zillas and somebody will buy them. Um, they come in over an inch and a quarter tread on them. I mean, they're super deep. They're like a light mud tire. They're not considered a heavy duty mud tire, but they're like a light mud tire. I think one of the reasons why they draw, drove so nice and straight on, on the pavement is you'll see how they all kind of line up and you got that nice contact patch right down the center there. And the, the, the rubber is very soft and they, they're, they're uh, grooved in the middle. So they're a little more, little, they'll grab, meant to grab like rock and stuff like that. Or if there's water, um, you know, it's got big sipes in them. So they may work out well. These little lines here are so that they don't get clogged up with mud. Uh, so you don't get like a vacuum like suction with the mud in there and then it doesn't clear out it'll clear the mud out really well i don't do a lot of mud but if you come across it you know you're prepared here um it's not a mud bogger if you're going to build in a mud bogging specific machine these don't wouldn't be the tires you select nor would these be the tires you'd select in out in the desert where i am if you were building a machine from scratch but they come on the machine they supposedly do everything pretty good and that's basically what you know manufacturers do they give you something that does pretty good um, I think they put these slightly aggressive mud tires on here just because they don't make a mud-specific machine. And maybe it's just kind of lure some more people looking for a mud-capable machine over to them. 
Their intakes are rather high from the factory, although they're not snorkeled. I mean, air intake is, is up here. So, I mean, if you're going in water much deeper than that, uh, you know, I know some of you mud guys do do that, but I don't, and I wouldn't. So I'll never be at the water that high. I, I barely be water past my foot, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. You know, and that's 16, 17 inches of water, you know, if it's covering your foot. You know, it's 12 inches to the bottom of that floorboard. So that's a lot of water to go through. Um, would you, will you have to on occasion? Of course. But if you're up to the handlebars, I mean, maybe get an XMR or a snorkel this and you'd be good. But again, I think they gave those tires. This is kind of lure some people over. If they're doing some muddy terrain right off the bat, they don't got to worry about changing the tires. These are going to handle it well uh, from what I've seen on some moderate mud. If you're getting into really huge deep mud pits, obviously, these wouldn't be the tires. There's other ones out there. But it's, it's supposedly it does everything well, and we'll put that to the test. We'll see. I know Dirt Obsession guys weren't 100% impressed with these and the trails they do and how they ride this machine. Uh, so if you're riding it aggressively, from what I understand, uh, they do push a little bit in the corners, um, just the nature of the big lugs and all that stuff. And, but we'll see how, how it handles my type of terrain and my type of riding. Again, if I don't like them, we'll just take them off, sell them. Uh, that'll eat the cost of some new ones. And we'll get some new tires. And so as far as... Everything else on the machine, I really like it. Um, we'll see how it does on this first trail ride, but overall, quality seems to be perfect. Other than that, a little bit low on oil. I haven't, this, you know, there was nothing I found, like not put together well, loose, anything like that. Um, I took, I pulled the plastics off in like under 10 minutes. Uh, just, I always check like certain connection points on a new machine. So like I check all my fluids, I check my lug nut torque, I retorque those on every new vehicle I get, cars, trucks, ATV, side by side, you name it. I use all the same thing on everything, um, just to be safe. Last thing you want is to assume everything's right. Somebody didn't check something before it went out the door and you're halfway down the road and you break down. I just check everything first, go over a brand new machine, takes a couple hours and I'm done. But I pulled all the plastics off, not all of them, but the ones needed to access the side of the motor. So I can get to the boot that goes on the intake uh, from the air box, just to check to make sure it was snug. You know, uh, some people say that they found theirs loose. Mine was not, it was tight. So I didn't have any issues there. But I pulled all the plastic stuff, put it back on in, you know, less than 10 minutes. So it was a super easy process. Uh, they make it very simple. Once you get off one 10 millimeter bolt and you take that top plastic piece off and the hood just pops off, it's just rubber grommets. This, these side panels just slide straight up. There's notches, they sit and they just slides up. You slide it back down, you put your 10 millimeter bolt, you put the top panels back on and you're done. So I mentioned already the one thing quality wise is this, this here. I feel like that could be seated a little better. And the other is the headlights. They kind of vibrate a, w a little bit. See how they move a little? And it's just the way they're mounted. It's all in plastic, you know? And this plastic housing is kind of just held on in that tab up there. And then you have one down there. I think that's why, it's just the nature of it. An easy fix is going to be, most likely, just uh, drill a hole in the plastic. And then just put a zip tie. And it'll hold it tight. You won't get that movement there. I'm going to do that. Um, I'll come up with a fix for it, and I'll show you guys. We'll do a little short video. Just to show you is how I did it. If you if this is something that bothers you, um, I checked it on mine. So the uh, chat and Dirt Obsessions mentioned it in their review of the machine that that was something they noticed, um, and I did find that to be the case with mine too. They do vibrate a little bit there, so you get a little bit of a shaking in the light, which could be annoying to look at. So easy fix. Uh, we'll we'll just take care of that, and then I'll show you guys how I did that. But everything else on the machine, perfect. Uh, factory suspension settings, a little soft, they say, for aggressive, aggressive trail riding. Um, but you can bump them up. You can also get some upgraded Elka shocks. Elka makes some upgraded shocks for these machines. So you can do that. That's an option for you as well. So if you wanted to upgrade your shocks, uh, you, Elka does make a full line of shocks replacements for these. You can get the Stage 2s, I believe, for around 11 and change, full all four. If you want to bump up to, say, a Stage 3 or Stage 4, they're around $1,600, 16 and change for a full set. Uh, not a bad investment if that's something you think you're going to need. And I don't know yet. We may do that down the road. Um, but we're going to use these ones for a while and see how she does. Eventually, if I want to upgrade the shocks, I'll upgrade the shocks. Um, and they'll still be nice and soft and comfortable. 
They do not run a front sway bar on these machines, just a rear sway bar. So you should get pretty good art uh, suspension articulation up front, considering there's no sway bar holding it back there, just the sway bar in the rear. And even the sway bar in the rear, it's not too thick. So, as far as like grease points and all that stuff, uh, another great thing about the Yamaha um, and the, most of the Japanese manufacturers, you don't, you'll find you don't have grease circs, right? And because they use a different type of um, suspension bushings that last a lot longer than Can-Am and Polaris do, from what I understand. And you don't need to grease them. There were people with thousands of miles on these machines and never replaced a bushing. You always hear the Can-Am and Polaris guys needing to replace bushings, specifically Polaris. Their bushings wear out. Their wheel bearings wear out. Uh, I've seen a guy wheel bearing on almost a brand new machine. The hub, the wheel completely fall off. Um, so <laughs> it's, you don't have that squeaks and the wear on the bushings that you, in these Japanese machines, the Hondas and the, uh, the Yamahas here. Um, there's only a couple of grease points and one is down here in the hub, one on each side. Um, I think that's, I mean, those are the only ones I've found. Uh, I think also maybe your drive shafts possibly need to be greased. Uh, although I don't see them on there either. So I believe those are the only grease points. I haven't uh, read the owner's manual as far as that goes gotten into too much depth on that but if there is another couple of grease points uh leave a comment below let me know if you guys have one of these machines and you know other areas uh, need attention with grease but those are the only two i found um as far as the exhaust goes i mean it's standard black factory muffler it's got a nice sound to it they actually for performance wise there's companies that sell just the tips you pull these bolts out you pull the whole core out the muffles intern the, these mufflers are uh, not packed they're internally baffled so there's some baffles here Kind of like a Flowmaster or a chambered muffler you would get on your car. Similar. It's got chambers in here. And then you have your core in the back with like this gigantic mesh and spark arrestor and a big, kind of like a quiet core uh, for your aftermarket exhaust. So you can pull that out, put a factory tip on there with a spark arrestor, they even come. And it gives you quite a bit more airflow. And then you just put a fuel tuner on here with just that alone. And they say you get a, you, you'll get a nice bump in horsepower, you know, four to five horsepower just from letting it breathe so much more and you get significantly less heat, the motor's gonna run a lot cooler. So that's an option, um, maybe to start out with. You can get that tip for like 60 bucks, the billet, the billet end cap. Uh, and then the tuner, fuel tuner, you can get one from EHS for $230, I think. So you're into it less than $300 for some performance and a better running machine. All these machines run lean from the factory. Just to pass the missions is the way the governments are. Europe, the United States are all, you know, cracking down on their missions. So they got to make these things run lean. So you got to richen them up a little bit um, to do any performance mods on them. They also have an air injection system on them. Uh, you'll see it's right there. And that just basically pulls air from the air box and it sticks it into the head right before the exhaust valve so that it pumps extra fresh air into, it works by vacuum kind of, but it'll pull fresh air from your air box. The, that hose runs to your air box. And it'll pull air and put it into the head right before the exhaust valve so that you have all that fresh air going into your exhaust. There's a catalytic converter also in the front of your muffler, stock muffler, and it causes the exhaust to run hotter and that catalytic converter to burn off the unspent fuel that hasn't been fully combusted in the engine for more emissions. Downside of that is your exhaust is going to run significantly hotter. Your pipe could start glowing at idle. Uh, from all that extra fresh air getting there. So easy fix for that, and it's a free, almost free fix. You just got to pull that hose off from the air box and cap it off. Or you can pull it right there and cap that off, cap both ends. But the easiest way to do it is that hose runs around. If, when you pull your seat off, the air box is under here. Uh, I'll pop that off for you here. I'll show you. So your air box is right here, and the hose goes right to the front of the air box. So you'll need to take this side panel off. But if you pull that hose off and you put a little like vacuum cap over the nipple on the box and slide the hose back over it's going to prove and it'll look factory it'll look like you never did anything to it and it's it'll cost you you know a dollar for the cap and um it's not going to be able to pull air out of the air box and suck it into the engine to go into your exhaust so that'll completely eliminate that system and it'll 
help right away drop the uh, exhaust gas temperatures uh, because they are significantly hotter with all that extra air going into it. So that's, what, that's like pretty much a free mod. You can do it right off the bat. So we'll do that first. We'll, then we'll use the machine, see how we like it, see what we're going to do to it moving forward. My hunch is, knowing the way I am, I'll probably do a slip-on exhaust and a fuel tuner. Uh, maybe we'll start off with just the cap and the fuel tuner. But to me, that's kind of like a cheap way to do it. Um, I prefer to just do the whole muffler. It looks better and get a little more performance. Maybe an HMF slip-on and the fuel tuner. We'll get this thing purring right. And uh, a couple more ponies out of it. But that's not what it's about. It's not about, you know racing around that was the reason why i went with this machine and got rid of the renegade because like i said i have the raptor for that but this is going to be 100 percent capable of doing anything i want it to do uh reliable and to top it off the colors and the look of this machine is absolutely gorgeous do another quick walk around and we'll wrap this one up i know it's getting long but i like to give you guys as much detail as possible in these videos so if you're considering buying one cover all bases here on Odyssey Off-Road. Love the stance, love the ground clearance. Can't wait to get out there and use this thing, put it through its paces. We are most likely, it's not locked in solid yet, we're, we're in the process of making the plans. As you guys know, I'm in southern Arizona. And we are attempting, my brother and I, to do a trip to West Virginia, that's pretty much clear cross country for me, for me to uh, the Hatfield McCoy trail system and uh, do like three or four days of riding there. Also, if you got any recommendations for an area at Hatfield McCoy where it's kind of central, where I can get to multiple trail systems, a uh, nice cabin to stay in, you know, with, with some places to eat and gas close by, you know, like a real convenient section of trail where to stay at where you can hit multiple trail systems because there's many tra different trail systems in the Hatfield McCoy's. Uh, if you guys know, if you have any recommendations on where to stay, where I can hit multiple trail systems within that, within the few days I'll be there, please leave a comment below and let me know your suggestions. Uh, really would appreciate that for my trip planning. But yeah, guys, I think that'll about wrap this one up. Went over the storage, went over the maintenance ease, went over the build quality, the looks of it. You can see. Um, you guys have any questions, anything detail you want to know that I didn't cover in this video, leave a comment below again. I have tried to answer almost every comment, uh, unless you're a knucklehead and you want to say something stupid. I'll just let you I'll leave you sit there. Um, but I try to answer almost everybody. I really appreciate all you YouTube guys. Uh, that and gals that watch the videos and comment and help me grow the channel. I really appreciate it. The channel's grown quite a bit in a couple of years we've been doing this. And so hope to grow it more. Hope you, if you're looking for grizzly content, you just clicked on this video just for the Yamaha Grizzly and you have no interest in the other machines. I have a Polaris Outlaw 110, Raptor 700, Raptor 350, and a Renegade 1000 XXC. If you don't care about any of those other machines and you're only looking for grizzly content, there will be more grizzly content, I promise you. I cover everything off-road basically on this channel, so there'll be a ton more Grizzly content, uh, how-tos, reviews, modifications, you name it. We'll cover all of it. So thanks for clicking on this video, guys. Also, if you haven't, follow us on Instagram. You can follow me. You can uh, find me there on Instagram at odyssey underscore off-road on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures there weekly and little videos, so you can kind of see in advance what's going to be coming on the youtube channel almost for those of you who followed me on instagram already you've already seen this grizzly i revealed it on there already but here she is on youtube now so thanks for checking out the video guys smash that like button on your way out subscribe to the channel if you haven't already leave a comment below say hi and we'll see you guys on the next one get out there ride safe